God, we bless you for your word today. We bless you for your spirit to move amongst us and pray that you would indeed have your way and your will. We pray, Abba, that, that, that those who didn't even make it today, Abba, that they are safe and sound in you, Abba, and if, that they're doing set-apart things. That you speak to their hearts and, and, and cause them, Abba, to be blessed by your words in their ears, Abba. And, and Abba, we just ask that you would give us clarity as we try to walk out our life in Mashiach and help us to not find ourselves going to the right too far or to the left too far, but that we go down that path straight and, and, and let your Ruach be what leads and guides us, Abba. And, and, and Father, we just, again, thank you for fellowship because it is sweet to be together with those who, who love you and love your great name. Mm -hmm. Amen, God. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, what is this what it about? Huh? It started. It started. Three, two, one. Bam! All right, ready to go. All right, so the um, today's lesson is called, oh, Shavuot's coming on 20th of June, also known as the Feast of Weeks. Um, coming on the 20th of June, it is a Shabbat. And so, you know, the expectation by the Most High is that we uh, cease from our labors on that day and uh, we'll have service here at Yehovah. Alright, you already know that stuff. So, I told you that today's message is, is, is tied in the curses. I don't know if the title is really accurate. I forgot something when I posted it. Um, but, but, but what's a curse? Can, can I get some participation here? Well, what's a curse? Anybody? The opposite of a blessing. My little one is smart. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What you got? This did the same thing. The same thing she said. Okay, I mean it's accurate. It's accurate. So, so, so that, but that leads us to the second one, and you cannot say the opposite of a curse. What is a blessing? The opposite of. <laughs> All right, let's keep you moving. Well, which one is more powerful? Hey, most people are saying this is a democracy. Most people seem to be saying a blessing. Anybody? Curse is yeah, more powerful. Curse is more powerful. Curse is more powerful. I they were both equally powerful. You think they're equally yeah. powerful? Yeah. Depending on who they come from. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so we're going we're gonna to walk that out. And uh, yeah. so the last bullet is, is for, for y'all who are on the fence, right? So I said, does the math tell us anything? It's like, my daughter's was like, here you go with that math thing. I am. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to go on, right? So. <clears throat> the first time we see this word blessing is in Bereshit 122, and that would mean bless them, saying, Be fruitful and increase, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. Now, the word increase is, anybody know what that word is in Hebrew? It's, it's, it's a version of, or a cognate of, Yosef. And that's, that, that's, his name was increase. See how that fits with who he was now? So, mm -hmm. so Yosef, his name was increased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, come on. Yeah, boy, you're awesome. So <clears throat> he blessed them and, and told them to be fruitful and to increase. And so let's go to, to sort of a definition. Um, to bend the knee, to kneel in homage or to drink water. Also, the extended idea of presenting a gift or giving honor to another uh, to bless, salute. Curse was a strange one, blaspheme, praise. I don't know how those uh, cognates get in there, but here, here, here's the deal. So a blessing is um, when you add to or offer something. We're going to see it a little bit better in a minute, but those are the sort of strong definitions. Then a curse, it says in Bereshit uh, 3, 17 through 18. And to the man, he said, what man? I just want to know if people reading that Bible. And to the man, he said, because you listened to the voice of your wife. What man was he talking to? Adam. Adam. Adam, right? And so all the men who have wives, don't be thinking, see, I don't got to listen to my wife. Because that's not what it's saying. It's saying that in the instance that he did what he did, that he was listening to his Isha when he should have told her, shut, shut up. No, he should have said shut up. He should have said, he should have said, Isha, that's not right. We're not going to do that. This is not the way to go. Put that down. 
<laughs> because you listen to the voice of Elisha and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and toil, and toil you are to eat of it all of the days of your life. And the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. Now, most of us probably agree that, you know, uh, that original sin thing cursed all mankind. Anybody disagree with that? Or, or agree with that? I mean, they, they agree. Okay, we yeah. agree, right? And so, the reason I'm saying it, this is because I want us to finally, and we'll get there, understand the answer from a biblical perspective to those questions I asked up here, which was, which one is more powerful? All right. So, so curse is uh, arar or um, to utter or wish evil against one, to implicate or call down evil upon, to call uh, mischief or injury to fall upon, to excrecate, excrete, I'm sorry. Then you see the, the paleo or pictographic Hebrew here and you see an ox head and then two heads. So it's a, a Aleph, Resh, Resh. And what this picture is, is that double strength against your head. Like, like, bam, bam, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's the, the picture that that word is painting. So, again, I taught this lesson, or pieces of this lesson, and up until now, the, the, the video, I mean, the slides have been uh, mostly out of that original deck. And right after this, we're going to switch to, you know, uh, 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 the right now uh, uh, slides. But I thought it was really important because sometimes, you know, over time, we, we find that the Most High gives us additional stuff. And every time I teach something, I never teach the whole thing. I never teach it all about that or everything I know about that, everything that came to mind. I, I teach something and then you add to and you add to and you add to. But in a general sense, a blessing brings forth a life and the abundance of it. Curses, on the other hand, bring forth a road paved with misery that ends in death. Notice the contrast. Life and that more abundantly. Somebody said that, Messiah Yahusha. Versus steal, kill, and destroy. Somebody said that regarding mm -hmm. our enemy, the devil. Yahusha, or Yeshua if you prefer, will give us much, as much, that should have been as much life as we allow. We will allow him. What do I mean by that? See, if he offers us life in that more abundantly, but, but it's like, y'all ever talk to, uh, I'll call them Native African continent people, or even Chinese people, or people from Bulgaria that come to America, and they start a business, and they, and they like, you know, their family is prospering, and they got like a multi, and they're like, oh, we're doing so well, right? And then the, the, the folk here, the brown-skinned folk here, can't keep a $15 an hour job. Y'all have seen that dynamic play out? <laughs> over and over again. And so, and so what I'm saying with this, with this uh, uh, statement here is that Mashiach will give us as much life as we're willing to get. In other words, you're not being held back by whatever because he's offering us life abundantly. So for anybody who thinks they can't do it, for anybody who thinks it never can happen to them, for anybody who's stuck in woe is me mode, I got a savior you need to meet. For real, for real. So let's go on. The thief will likewise steal all you don't have secured. And, and, and he doesn't, let me tell you, the devil don't care if you saved or not. If you're going to give him all your stuff, he'll take it. If you're not going to watch your own gate, I mean, I can testify to it. Mm -hmm. He'll take it. Because his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's plain now. So, fresh slides. Blessings and curses. So, I said what I said in the previous slide about, you know, the impact being the blessing bringing forth life. And now I'm going to say that a blessing exists extends your Elohim-given abilities. Sometimes they, they, they even give you abilities that you don't have. Certainly that you didn't know you had. 
And so when, when you think about, so remember they were building the, uh, uh, the, the temple, not the tent of meeting, I'm sorry, and the furniture and stuff. There were these guys that were uh, uh, chosen to um, build the Ark of the Covenant and to get the gold on there just right and the, and the car of the candelabras uh, with the almond buds on it and all that stuff. And it said that they were anointed for this, that they were gifted for this, that he had chosen them and gifted them to do it. And so they weren't just normal uh, guys who said, well, you know, if I just try and I try and try, they actually had a blessing on them. They gave them the ability to do that. And I'm here to tell you that everybody in the sound of my voice has got a blessing on them to do something. And the challenge oftentimes is, one, believing that and seeing what it is. Our children especially can, can, can often you know, wonder what it is that they should do, what they can do or whatever. And, 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 and so a blessing always extends your ability. On the other hand, curses always diminish your ability. They, they weaken and hold you back. Like a piece of wood that's been fortified or lacquered or even better, braced with steel as an extension of its strength, that would be a blessing picture. Uh, so is the termite infestation and the holes, is that the right holes? Yeah, it is. The, the holes that they eat into the wood are weakening of that wood and hence a good picture of a curse. In other words, you have a piece of wood, if, if the termites bit in and you had to hit a baseball or a person or whatever, it would be so weak, it would be likened to a curse. And that's what curses do. They eat at your strength. They hold you back. They, they prevent or at least hinder you from that thing that Elohim made you for. Whereas a blessing always strengthens you for it. So in Deuteronomy 28, <laughs> notice that in this chapter, 14 verses are used to articulate the blessing. And yet how many? 54. 54 verses are used to describe the curses. So I know the Bible and the science are always mixed, but listen to what I'm going to say. So this to lead us to think that the curses are more powerful than the blessings. But I want to make it clear that blessings are superior in every way. And that it is no coincidence that it takes almost four times the curses to undo or compare to each of the verses of the blessing. I don't, I, I mean, you, you, you think he just, it's like, well, when I hate you, I'm going to hate you more, right? But, but, but remember these kind of passages. Even, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Even like I watched over you to send you out and disperse you into all the nations, so shall I watch over you to bring you back to the land of Israel. So it's the same thing he's doing. It's just a matter of going away or pulling back. And so I'm using that kind of logic, and it may not be fair, you all so, so please don't say, you know, this is what Elohim said. But it's 54 verses to describe the curse, and... 14 to, to describe the, the blessing. So, but that's the Alright, so let's go on. So, Waikra 26, if you're familiar with it. In this chapter, anybody unfamiliar with Waikra 26 and its sort of contrast of blessings and curses? Mm -hmm. you, you go read it, go read it sometime, and, and, and you'll see that it's likened into Devilin 28. But of course, it doesn't have the passages about uh, in ships and all these kind of things that you see in Deuteronomy 28. All right. So it's 13 verses here to articulate the blessing and 46 to articulate the curses. So this again can lead us to believe that. But, but watch this. It's four, almost four times again. The curses to undo or compare to the blessings in that chapter. All right. So let's go on. So I went considering it. Well, Messiah, according to Galatians 3.13, and you can look that up on your own, uh, became, 13 and 14 you probably want to read, um, became a curse to us. This does not release us to be lawless. But l let me tell everyone why I'm saying that. Because, because there's this group of people, and y'all may have a name for them, that says, 
that the law is a curse. Y'all ever heard that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and nowhere, no, the, the law ain't a curse. It's got curses in it, don't get me wrong, but the law is not a curse. And so what Mashiach did, what, what Mashiach did was he, he rescued us from what we deserved for breaking the law. And we need to articulate that carefully, not just for people listening, but in our own heart. Because that conversation we were having earlier, Akeem, brother, we were having earlier about people leaving Mashiach out of the picture, slowly but surely drifting away from him. It's because they're not keeping this in the forefront of their mind. That he 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 paid for what we should have deserved. And it's like, is that a strange concept? No. If you look through Leviticus, if you do this, then you have to bring an animal. You have to bring a turtle dove. Then you have to bring a bullet. Then you have to bring a, a, a lamb. So this is not a new concept. But Mashiach, he became that, that, that animal. Let me ask you this way. So now that we've seen sort of both the technical and Ephraim's definition for a blessing and a curse, so that animal, the Waikra, I go do something wrong, and then I take that animal and I cut his neck and let his blood out. Did he just get blessed? So, so the curse fell on him, then in it. That's all I'm saying. Mm. And so that's what Shaul is saying in Galatians regarding Mashiach, that the curse fell on Mashiach so that you had an opportunity to live an abundant life. Now, I don't know what's going around in people's heads, right? I don't know if everybody is like thinking one thing or another. But one of the challenges I have when I'm looking at Deuteronomy 28 or Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'm talking to brothers who are saying, you know, see, this is us, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're, 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 it seems to me, let me just make it straight. So, so not necessarily you want, but this seems to me that what they're saying is they want to agree with and continue to walk in the curses. Because, because if, if Mashiach became a curse for us, if he paid the price for our ancestors' drama, then I'm thinking, I just hold on, we'll get there. So, so who would do these, these, these things and call them righteous? So let's go to the book and just read something really quickly out of Deuteronomy chapter 27. That chapter right in front of 28. Let me know when you get there. Uh, get right past it. So, I said 14 and on. Everybody find it that wants to find it? Yes. All right, so Deuteronomy 14 and forward. And the Levites shall speak to the, with a loud voice and say to all the men of Israel, Curses the man who makes a card or molded image. Uh, an abomination of, to Yahuwah, the work of hands of the craftsman, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall say, Amen. Curses he who makes light of his father or mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. So before I go through, through all of them, I just want to ask the question, do y'all think this meant, you know, cussing at them, calling out their name? Or did, do you think that this was weakening their ability and tapping out away from them some of their Elohim given ability and strength? Which one y'all think it is? Cut the second one. It seemed pretty clear to me it's the second one. So let's just go on. Cursed is he who moves his neighbor, neighbor's boundary and all the people shall say amen. Cursed is he who misleads the, the blind in the way and all the people shall say amen. Cursed is he. Now, everything that they're doing is wicked. And I'm telling you, anybody who says, you know, the, the, the law is a curse, take them here and ask them. So you telling me that it's okay? Because 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 they've been to Deuteronomy 28. They've been to a uh, uh, had a battle with Galatians. They've seen in Romans that the law is set apart and all. They've seen that already. They say, well, all we have to do is keep the 10 words. Well, okay. Look at this right here. And you tell me, Mr. Believer in 
What you say you believe in? Grace. <laughs> oh man, he even went there. <laughs> so, 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 so on the for real, for real, we all got a lot of grace we're getting from other people. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. I don't, you don't think so? I mean, yeah, we do, but I'm saying okay. that that's what they're saying because they don't keep the other. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. So long, wrong page. I, I thought I was going to have to drill down as that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but if you look at this and you ask them, so which one of them, I mean, so since, since you know, you grew under grace, and, you know, I guess any of this is cool. You know, go down and get the blind folk and just lead them over to the cliff and say, just just one more step, we're almost there. And the most high will be like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And you just go on down the list. Here. So I'm not going to even go through all of them, but read 14 on and use that. Put, put it in your toolkit. Because you're going to have to witness to somebody. And they're going to say, nah, the law is such and such and such. It's like, okay, well, look, look, look. But Paul said, uh, without the law, I wouldn't have known that, you know, covetous was wrong. And I don't like that. So. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. All right. So let's, let's keep it moving. All right. And uh, Luke 9 or John chapter. Oh, I thought we went too fast. So. In Romans chapter 6, I love this, and this one sister made a song of it. It was, it was, I really liked it because it was just so clear to me when I heard her sing it. She, it says, what then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin and let favor increase? Let it not be, be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? And anybody got that in the King James, Robert? You, you got that in the King James for something? You got it? Say, say it out loud. Chapter 6, verse 1? 1 and 2. Okay. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin mm -hmm. that grace may abound? Mm -hmm. Y'all forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. And so, so why am I emphasizing that? Because this, this, this message really, you know, it walks a bit of a tightrope here. And it, it, like I said, we all under some level of grace, right? But at the same time, we're, we're Torah compliant, Torah observant. We're, we're, like I said earlier, right? So so it's like, well, you know, somebody can say, y'all mixed up, y'all confused, which one is it? It's like, no, we're not mixed up, no, we're not confused. Mm -hmm. And we'll see a little bit more of, of, of how that works as we go on. So, well, Messiah, well, wrong direction. So first John chapter three, verse twenty-three, it says, and this is his command that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahusha HaMashiach, or Yahusha Messiah, and love one another as he gave us command. Now, when I say, you know, and when the book says love one another, now go back to Deuteronomy chapter twenty-seven and, and you tell me, do you love a, a guy that's blind that you walk him into a ditch? Is that love? But the problem is, is that so many people will use the word love and have no definition for it. Mm -hmm. It's a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's like, yeah. But he said, y'all yeah, know, if you love me, keep my commands. In verse 24 of the same chapter, it says, one guarding his commands stayed in him, stays in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he stays in us by the spirit which he gave us. So in Ezekiel, it's, it made it really clear that the reason the Most High was going to pour his spirit out, was going to give his spirit to folk, was so that they could keep his Torah. All right. So in James chapter 4, it says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow let us go to such and such city. Spend a year there. So I'm going to have a question for y'all. So get ready on to read this. Spend a year there and trade and make profit when you do not know of tomorrow. For what is your life? For it is a vapor that appears for a little and, and then disappears. Instead of your saying, if the master desires or if the master wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your proud speeches. All such boasting is wicked. To him then who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Mm. So there may have been a time when you didn't know what the Torah was to all our 
un untoward and unlearned people. Mm -hmm. And as we learn more and more about there might have been a time that, that you could have skated by on this, but when you know it's sin and you still decide to do it, I think the Hebrew writer says, and then, you know, mm -hmm. there's some lashes for you. Mashiach Mesh didn't die for that part. So, so, so that means somebody got to get it. And that somebody is the one who did it. What you got, Eli? That you are the one who is willing to die for the his people's sin. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You're interested? He said that the initials is willing to die for our sins. Amen. He did it Isaac. He was willing to do it. And, and that's why I said Isaac was so so powerful, even though he was quiet. All right. So, um, so my question for everybody was: so, so does this seem like religious talk when I say, "Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, Alabama next week," as opposed to "I'm gonna go to Alabama next week if the Most High wills it." Does this seem cumbersome? Does it? Do you understand my question? What I'm saying is that, so, so I, I used to know people, right? And, and everything they said, it was like, if the Lord will. If the Lord will. And, 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 and so, you know, it's like, people don't want to seem strange. Pe people people want to uh, want to fit in, most people. And you're having a conversation at work, and you like, so, so you know, Y'all know all of the days of the week were named after who? Different. Different. Yeah. So-called mighty ones, right? So, so I'm at work, and they say, uh, oh, you, you taking off blank day? And I'm like, no, I'm not taking off blank day. I'm taking off blank blank day. So, mm -hmm. so how, how, how far would that go? That means, uh, you know, I, I, so uh, in, 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 I don't know if it's German or Dutch. Friday is free talk. So uh, Monday is moon, moon talk or something like this, right? So so I says, uh, I'm going to be out of the office on, on moon day. And I put the extra O in there on purpose, right? Nobody even caught it. <laughs> they must have thought it was a, 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 a tip. But, but, but I, was, I was just <laughs> trying to see how many people recognized that it was named the building moon, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so what's my point here? My point is, is that, you know, if I said the first day, the second day, the third day, to all these people who are outside of the kingdom, outside of the way, and even some people who are in the kingdom who don't have any problem with it, I would be having cumbersome, clumsy conversations. Because they, they, they're like, what are you talking about? Why are you, why don't you just say money, man? Right? And so what I'm asking here is that, you know, does that kind of clumsiness hinder us from remembering that if the master wills, we'll do such and such? Because, because truly, the truth, the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, we can make some plans, but they're not going to come to pass unless he allow them, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a sense of pride, too, when you don't yeah. do that. I mean, that's exactly what Yaakov said. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, let's go on. All right, so oftentimes those in authority will curse those that they should be caring for. This is usually done via. Guess how that happens? How do curses done? Read, read what it says. Oftentimes, those in authority will curse those that they should be caring for. This is done usually done via. How do they do that? Anybody got a guess or idea? Scrunched up face from my little one. Anybody got an idea? How do, you, how do these people put these curses on each other. How do curses come anyway? Spirits. Spirits. You say the same thing? I was going to say, um, just by speaking it. Just huh? by saying it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, 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 any other, any other ideas? It comes by the tongue, just like she said. Mm -hmm. So Proverbs 11, 10 and 11 says, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the but violence covers the mouth of the wrong. 18 and 7, a fool's mouth is his ruin, mm -hmm. and his lips are a snare of his life. Mm -hmm. Whoever guards his mouth 
and his tongue guards his life from distresses. I think the King James says, he who keeps his mouth keeps his life. And so it, it, it's, 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 it goes back to what Jacob is saying, and he'll say again, I, I think I got a slide on it, that, that we have to watch what we say. And so, so in James chapter 3, and y'all know these passages, but I'm going to read them because uh, I, I, want to, I want to reemphasize a couple things. So, so too the tongue is a little member, yet it boasts, yet boasts greatly. See how a little fire kindles a great forest? And the tongue is a fire, the world of unrighteousness among our members. The tongue is set, the one defiling the entire body and setting on fire the will of life, and it is set on fire by Gehenna, or by hell. So, Yaakov didn't seem to have any kind of words to say about the tongue. And I think it's because he understood that life and death is in the power of our tongue. And today's sort of backdrop is curses, right? And, and, and you can't really talk about curses without blessings. And they come out of our mouth. And we and we have to make some decisions about what do we want to come out of our mouth? And those of us in authority, how do we how do we correct without cursing? Hold on to that one, I'll fill that bucket in a little later. He goes on further to say in verses seven, uh, for every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. In other words, you didn't you, you can ride on backs of whales or something, but no man is able to tame the tongue. So I guess we should just give it up then. No man is able to tame the tongue. It, come on, bro. I was hoping somebody would kick in on me. Y'all didn't hear him. He said, How do I can? The spirit of Elohim can. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, that thing is unruly, just like he said, but, but, but you're not going to grab a hold of it by yourself. It is unruly, evil, filled with deadly poison. I mean, my goodness, he's kind of harsh on his tongue, and I think it's because he's not holding any punches back. With, with it we bless our, our Elohim and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of Elohim. Out of the same mouth receive blessings and curses. My brothers, this should not be so. And I include my sisters as well. Hallelujah. So, watch your mouth. Because stuff don't come out of your mouth that didn't come from somewhere. What did, what did she got say? He said, out of the abundance of your heart, Shall a person speak? So, so we need a clean heart. He said the heart is deceitful and wicked. Remember these things? So, so we need to clean up our heart so that the right thing can come out of our mouth. Alright. Yeah. So, so I have this eighth grade math teacher. Y'all might have heard this story before. Last week, how we brought something up to my memory, it gave me chills. It just, it just hit me like a brick. I have not forgotten this incident. In fact, I've spoken of it many times. Like I said, y'all haven't even heard me talk about it. Um, but, but yet, the spiritual impact impact had to be revealed. And you might have similar experiences. So I'm gonna tell my story. So I'm in eighth grade, right? And I know I'm a, I'm a nice turban wearing guy these days. But in eighth grade. I didn't wear a turban. I, I wasn't always so nice. So to make it straight. Some of my friends were rough needles. I can just put it like that, right? <laughs> Some of my friends were just kind of, you know, the, the bad guys, the ones. And one day, I was in math class. I don't even know what I was doing. But my teacher, she grabbed me by the arm. And she grabbed me so hard that she left fingerprints and nail prints in my arm. And she grabbed me and pulled me to her like this, and she says, you will never amount to nothing. You're not going to make it out of high school. And she shook me while she was saying it. I mean, she just really, like, and then she let me go. 
And I'm thinking, what was that about? And I thought about it, I said, okay, I'm hanging out with that one, I'm hanging out with that one. Now, mind you, I had an A average, but I was hanging out with that one and hanging out with that one too. And so maybe she was thinking, I'm gonna squander all of my ability hanging out with them folk. So, so time and time passes. And, I mean, I got to high school, I, I made it out of high school, I got to college, I did all that. And so, in a manner of speaking, she just proclaimed a curse over me. Do you all see that? Yeah. Okay. Last week was the first time that I felt like the Most High was saying, she may have, she may have pronounced a curse over you, and it may be responsible up to today for some of the stuff that you struggle with. But 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 I'm willing to walk you through it right now. So I hit my knees, I went to the closet, I hit my knees and I prayed, and I felt this incredible release off of myself. I know it's a feeling, and time will tell whether or not. But I felt like that thing that she put on me was a shackle in that even all the things that I may have done and achieved were only, were hindered, were, 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 were slowed down, were diminished, like I described in curses, because of that thing that she said. And so being in authority, we need to be really mindful that we don't speak this kind of stuff over our wives, over our children, over those that we might be teaching or whatever the case is. Because it could have a, a, a effect if, 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 and I don't say this to boast in me, but let's just call it, if I had like 100% capability and, and, and maybe her curse cut me down to 87, but I want my 100. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. so, 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 so this is the reason why you know, we need to really take heed and maybe even look back at our own life and see who said what. Was, was daddy reckless with his mouth? Was mama reckless with her mouth? Was teacher, pastor, elder, whatever, reckless with their mouth over my life? And I want you all to, to consider that, no matter how young or old you are, and, 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 and prayerfully, the Most High give you the same kind of revelation and opportunity so that you can be free of that curse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is really about the, the, the tongue, right? So me and Nibby are watching this nature show, and uh, this alligator had laid all these eggs in the sand, and they start hatching. And and and, the, and she and she like start picking them up, right, with her mouth. Y'all seen alligator teeth, right? You know they got the strongest bite, whatever, whatever, right? And she's picking these things up with her mouth, with her teeth, and putting them in her mouth. And like she got fifteen of them in her mouth. And then she goes out to the water and she lets them out in the water and she goes back and get another 15. And I'm thinking, okay, so if the mouth, if the tongue is so deadly, like an alligator's mouth is so deadly, what stopped her from crushing her own children? And what it was is that she loved them. I know we don't talk about alligators loving their children, but she wanted them to make it. And so she used this thing that would be deadly to even a hippopotamus would have to fight with an alligator. Mm -hmm. But yet she used that same tool to bless her little ones and get them out to safety. And I guess for me, the, 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 the contrast was that I need to be careful to use my tongue to be a blessing to get folk and those under my authority out to safety and not to hinder them, to bless them and build them up. Hallelujah. So, he is our Jubilee. Who's the he I'm talking about? Anybody? I know I've I seen this live. Yeah. Yahweh Shah. Yeshua. I mean, Yeshua Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Say it. Yahushua, the, the king of all kings. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, our, he's our Jubilee. So, what happens at Jubilee? Anybody? Anybody? Jesus was free. 
Go ahead. At least get set free. Break it down. Yeah. Anybody? From bondage. From, from all of us. From bondage, from death, from anything. It's like a reset, right? Mm -hmm. Just like in the 50th year, anyone found the old ground, we went through that. We, we, what day around, we went through that. You would accumulate, you could accumulate that all over again. In other words, your family land could come back to you. And you could immediately start to lose it again. And depending on how good you were at losing it, you could lose it quick, or you could lose it slow. So, so what's my saying? So, so how did you do that? By violating or transgressing the Torah, by breaking the rules that the Most High put in place. And so now we find, so our Savior came, right? And he, he, he died for our sin and he gives us this reset. But he didn't give us no free ride. He didn't say, okay, now that I died for you, you'll never have to repent of anything. You'll never have to do anything anymore. I gave you a, a, a one-way ticket to the New Yerushalayim. That's not what he said. He gave us the reset. And so now we're, we're got to be alert and aware and dealing with. We got to try to keep the Torah and please that mean. We got to repent and suffer for our own in, uh, uh, seeds that we sow. It's, 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 not, it's not, again, all grace, all law. It's grace and law married together. Well, I think that's the last slide. So, so we had a good conversation yeah. beforehand, but I want I want to be sure that we understand one that that the blessings that Yahusha gave us are because He took away the curse. And you remember what I said about. He'll give us as abundant life as, as we're willing to get. So, so I know I know we're in midstream. I know the house of bondage concept. I know all of that. But set apart ones. I remember a brother named Yosef who was right there in Mizraim, had been sold into slavery. And what did he become but the regent, the second in command? He, he had everything he wanted and then some. But how did he get there? Because he was obedient, even when under pressure. And so I want us to know that obedience brings forth a blessing, just like disobedience brings forth a curse. But obedience is not limited by where you are. We can be obedient here. We can be obedient there. Whatever the case is, and the Most High is going to see and bless for it. And so, if anything is the thread or the, the purpose of this, 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 this lesson, that is to understand that, that the blessings of the Most High are, are superior, overcome the curses. And you say, well, Crane, what about, what about dying? I mean, because that was a curse, wasn't it? See, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 say what y'all ain't oh, yeah. didn't think to say. Right? <laughs> But, but, but what did the Shiach say? He said, oh, death, where is your sting? I mean, that's what Shaul says on his behalf. Where is your, where is your sting? Because what, 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 what had to happen had to happen so that you can get an incorruptible body. But he took away the sting of it. So now, all of a sudden, what was a curse and a dreaded thing doesn't have to be a curse and a dreaded thing. I will say it would be gained. Amen. Amen. Him mm -hmm. I love it when, when I get Bible reading people in, 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 in here with me because mm -hmm. that's exactly what he said. Yeah. And, and so and so now what was a curse, I mean, we look at it and say, you know, it's a little bit of a mystery because I don't know exactly how this works. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, my confidence is in everything that I've read and has been revealed to me in my walk. And I don't know how, how it's going to be all right, but it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. I was just thinking about, you know, when, when it comes down to Yeshua, as a nation of people who got kicked off the land and lost all your heritage, your identity, well, that's going to be restored later. And that's in the, 
Ezekiel 37. Amen. But uh, I think now it's like an individual thing now. Amen. No matter what race you are, Amen. if you understand the scripture here too, Amen. You, it's, it's all individualism now. Uh, so the blessings, if you understand the blessings, mm -hmm. you want to live in obedience, it, it, it'll work. The blessing will, because he promised if you, if you do this, I'll bless you. Amen. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I was thinking about, uh, when you look at, I don't like that word curse, I'd rather prefer that word punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you look at, in the Genesis, what God told Adam and Eve, do not test the tree, because you're going to die. Mm -hmm. So God punished them. Mm -hmm. He said, Adam, you now you got to work hard, man. The ground, the ground is going to be jacked up. You got thorns in it. You're going to have to work hard until you die, man. And uh, he didn't remove that. The ground still jacked up. They got their chemicals on everything. Yeah. And then when it relates to the females, uh, he said, Eve, you're going to have pain in your childbearing. And I believe that's still in effect today. Uh, God did not remove that. You know, I remember my wife had her uh, babies, uh, she was howling, crying, and saying bad words to me when I was in the room. He didn't remove that punishment off nobody. And then God began to say, well, Noah, build an ark, man, uh, because these people were living in obedience. So he killed the whole world because of that. So you go on and on and on, God is saying punishment on you because you failed to obey what I'm saying. You fail to recognize I'm your God, and what I got for you is to bless you, but you rather listen to another voice, you're not paying attention to me. Mm -hmm. So then when it comes to us, the same principle. Over and over and over again, he told the Israelites, listen, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, all through the scripture, all through it, even Yeshua said, if you love me, keep the words over and over and over again, but people, the mindset is, I ain't got to listen to that, I don't know that, as long as I believe, but you don't realize you're living in a life of obedience, disobedience. Yeah. And people don't connect all the dots. I mean, you know, uh, and uh, it's like a voice, uh, it's like a voice, uh, like John the Baptist, a voice in the wilderness. People ain't hearing what you got to say. And now you have uh, the arch enemy of God got all this false religion out here. Uh, I mean, as I study and learning, like more and more, like, man, you mean tell me Christianity is a made up satanic religion with bit on slavery and murder and mayhem and lies? Islam is based on uh, slavery, murder, and lies. The fake Jews, they, they, they basically got it, and everybody got their own little book. Mm -hmm. Christianity got the book where they mix, they mix it all up, toss it all up, and yeah. add stuff, yeah. talk, talk, stuff out of it. Islam did their little book called the Talmud. I mean, it's called the uh, Talmud. Not the Talmud. The Jew got the Talmud, right. but the it's Islam. The Quran, 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 Islam. Quran. So now, the, the, the script that God gave here is this, and nobody want to listen to it. Oh, I don't want to worry about the Old Testament no more. Not that. You just believe in the word of we, the teachers. And, and, and uh, Paul said, in the last day, there's going to be doctrines of devils. Amen. And people don't understand it. They Amen. won't pick the book up. They won't pick up and study it and realize when you took any type of book up, guess what? you got to start from the beginning to the end to understand the whole story. If you don't know, if you don't know the history, how are you going to understand the future? Okay. But I remember mean, when I became a believer in Christianity, they gave me the book. Like I say, you start reading the book of a uh, uh, book of John. Okay, I know about you, sure, but I didn't know the whole story. I didn't know the whole story. You got to read the whole story to understand everything. Amen. That's Amen. the part people don't realize, man. Right. Amen. So you said a key word there that, that actually wanted to touch upon, but I guess I, I didn't find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. This whole idea of belief. Right, yeah. and and so you know, Yaakov or James covers it so well because he says that you know, faith without works is yeah. dead. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and so I mean, with that right there, how 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 hard is it to? It's right there. It's in the New Testament. I mean, well, what kind of works? It's like well, mm. it, it, it's just incredible to me that the people. Um, who are teaching are willing to teach these lies because the truth of the matter is that people who are hey hallelujah the people who are who are listening they they so so the most high meant for the leaders to lead and he meant for the ones who weren't leaders to follow them. 
Yeah. And that's why he says, Woe to the pastors and be my sheep astray. Wow. Yeah. So 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 he's not he's not as hard on the sheep that are going astray as he is on the leaders that are leading them astray. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like the uh, parable where uh, this guy kept this guy and had this guy to keep charge of his house until he come back. Mm -hmm. And uh Say now, what if he began to eat and drink with the sinners and all that kind of stuff? And, mm -hmm. and uh, when when he come back and catch him, and uh, he, he's going to receive a greater punishment because you know yeah. he knew better than the one that didn't. The one that didn't know better, he's going to receive the lesser punishment. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 But you know, I I, I uh, was looking at a, at a video on YouTube the uh, day, uh, day and uh, this this guy was. Glorifying keeping Sub Saharan Africa poor. I don't understand. In other words, he was saying, Yeah, Sub Saharan, we need to keep it poor. We don't need them to prosper. This guy ain't thinking the Bible. Huh? Yeah, but I'm just saying how the wicked is ruling over the poor people, and they don't think they're going to be accountable for it. Mm. Yes, he sir. tried to justify that. Yes, but I'm saying, I said, this, you don't have to pay for that. You're doing wickedness to poor people. Yeah. So, so you know, you know, every time, um, every time Israel got in trouble, the Most High used another nation to deal with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And at least three of those times, the another nation ends up in trouble because of what they did. What they did. Yeah. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar is my favorite because he ended up what? Reprobate didn't have him. And he was seven years out like an animal, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so, so, why am I saying this? Because whoever is in charge, we, we can expect that vengeance is mine, saith Yahuwah, he will repay. Hallelujah. So, mm -hmm. so, so if he, I mean, even in the Torah, it says that. You know, if somebody does something wrong, that you to give them 40 lashes, save one. Always show mercy unless you look on your brother like an animal. And so and so he, he, he incorporated that mercy in the law. And he expects it at every level. And so whoever is in charge, you know, whether you say it's the Illuminati or the Cabal or the whatever you come up with, right? That it's, it's not like I'm gloating in the fact they're going to get what they got coming, but the matter of fact is they're going to get what they got coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Anybody got something? Hey, don't get shy because we got a little influx. <laughs> I, I asked you a question about, I was talking about the testimony of Hamasha, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, if somebody was to ask you, let's say they read um, in Revelations, where it says those who keep the commandments mm -hmm. and have the testimony of Messiah, mm -hmm. sure. if they asked you, okay, how do I actually explain to me having the testimony of your sure? Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? So, so we spent a long time earlier talking about this whole idea, and I said, that's what born again is. Remember that? So yeah, we're going right. to tie back to that, right? Right. So when when Jacob was was wrestling with the, the angel in, in 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 Genesis chapter thirty two, two times, when he was wrestling in there, that's when he was getting in down and dirty with the Most High. That's when he was getting intimate with him. That's when he was struggling against himself against itself with the most high, right? Mm -hmm. And so I says that unless we have that intimate thing, that intimate connection, because people say, well, I believe in Jesus. How many times you heard that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm quick to remind myself that I'm nobody's ultimate judge, but I hear emptiness in that all the time. I hear, hear people say that from a religious perspective and, 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 and they don't have, see, because if I'm not like Abraham when he was uh, 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 saying that Sarah was his sister, but if me and Nebuchadnezzar are going somewhere, right, and uh, somebody says to me, uh, you know, you know, who, who's that sister? You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. who's that sister? Like, like they want to 
have a conversation with her, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm gonna say that's my wife, and it's gonna come out. <laughs> it's gonna come out a certain way, right? right. Mm -hmm. And it, that certain way is from the reality that that's my isha, right? And what I'm saying is that when we talk about the testimony of Mashiach, unless you've got that 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 thing in there that's driving that testimony. Other than, I mean, I'm not talking about you went to Sunday school all the time, you went to Shabbat school all the time, you can say all the books of the Bible, frontwards and backwards in Hebrew and English. That's not what I'm talking about. Unless you got that thing that says that that's my Mashiach. I've made, I've made my covenant with Elohim. I've been restored to Elohim through him. And that thing is genuine and real. Mm -hmm. Unless you, that, that, that's the testimony right there. Yes, right. Yes, right. Because that was believing in tremble. Amen. Right. So, 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 so that's why I said what I said earlier about so many you know, videos and people who are here and teaching and, they're, and they're, they're downplaying Mashiach. I'm wondering if they have his testimony. Mm -hmm. Beca because you 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 can keep the Sabbath. You cannot eat catfish. You can not eat pork chops. You can do all these things that you can do, mm -hmm. and you can get up and you can teach. You can wear garments. You can have fringes. You can do all of that stuff and be backstroking in the lake that burns with fire. Let me tell you now, right. because because we're not going to gain our salvation through the Torah. It is the biggest mistake that the Hebrew roots, the Hebrew Israelites, the Jewish, the Jewish, but, but the Jewish, Jewish, Jewish guys. So, 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 let me finish this thought for first. If you can just, just hold it. So, so, if you can do this on your own, then Messiah died for nothing. And this balance, here it is again, this balance must be maintained or else you're going to find yourself drifting off into Judaism, campism, something ism that, 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 that makes you <laughs> Mashiach, what do they call it? They call themselves uh, Messianic-ish, like Jewish. You get the ish on the back is, is like girl-ish. You know, you kind of like it, but you're not really a girl. So, what you got? Yeah, I, I like when you said balance. It's got to be balanced. Uh, because when you read in Revelation 22, verse 14, it said, Blessed are they who keep his commandments, that they might have a right to the tree of life Amen. and enter through the gates of the city. Mm -hmm. So, both of them go hand in hand. Right. You can't have water without it being wet. So, right. it's got to go hand in right. hand. Yeah. Keeping the law and, 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 the, and the grace of mm -hmm. the book. Yeah. yeah. That, that, this, is, this is exactly why uh, I have shed all of my labels. In other words, you know, are, are you a Hebrew person? No. Nope. Are you a something something person? No. Nope. Are you? I mean, because so, I don't want anything other than they say, well, what are you? What do y'all do? People ask me all the time. What, what do y'all do? I says, well, we we we, we have the testimony of Messiah and we keep the commandments of Elohim. What is that? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's what Bill said. The, the, only, the, only, the only the only one that I sometimes use is that I'm I'm I'm, I'm in the way. So, so I'm intentionally, I'm, I'm looking to engage them. I'm not trying to, because if you say you are this, and they, they, they think they know what you are. Right. Right. It's like, oh, well, so, well, you, well, you don't sound like a Christian, and you don't sound like a Jew. Well, I tell them, well, you know, I'm the best of both of them. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this this is some of us talk about what you asked. If a person, how could you as you read Genesis 14, 12, you said? Revelation 14, 12. Yeah, yeah. If you keep the testimony, you sure and keep the commandments. And people don't really understand that, but I always try to share with people that uh, you got to exalt Christ, you know what I mean? John 3, 16, right. 17, you know, John 3, 36, you got the Son to have life. Amen. You don't have to say you're going to have life. It's, right. all, it's all in the Gospels, you know, but like you said, the balance is you have to Keep the Torah to be obedience. Because when you think about it, right? When you think about it, there's only one pure faith or religion that Yahuwah gave. You. That's the Old Testament. That's it. All the rest of them is fictitious. Right. People don't understand that. Like, okay, well, God came down on Mount Sinai and talked to the Israelites at the bottom of the mountain. Mm -hmm. 
He said, here's you people, you, we hear my voice. You're my chosen people. You're my priest. Yes, sir. Now, this is the religion I'm giving to you to teach this world. Right. Satan on Satan got in there and got all this food is going on. And people got the book in their house. And all they're doing is listen to doctrines of the devils. They're not following the tour. Mm -hmm. That's how it's, what, what the scriptures say. Say Satan was the most wisest angel. Yeah. So now he's down here using his wisdom to deceive right. everybody. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. he says that in Revelation 12. So Satan got kicked out. I think Revelation 12 or 9, he got kicked out. Mm -hmm. And he's down here now deceiving the whole world. Oh, they right. said he was beautiful. Didn't yeah, yeah. He was beautiful and wise, but he had, he had wisdom. That's so, so this is what you got going on in the world. You know, you got all this false religion, and then people got the book, the Torah, right there, but nobody's looking at it. Right. No, the devil told you, you ain't got the following that stuff. You ain't got Jesus. And so everybody, like the same trick he did Adam and Eve, guess what he's doing to the whole exactly. world now? Yeah. And the only, yeah. way, the only way you're going to wake up, you got to hunger and furnish yourself. I want to know the truth, man. I'm tired of all this, this craziness out here. So you pick this book up. You pick the book up. You talk right. from the beginning, and you start to read and say, "You sure? You sure? Tell me what this means." And he began to take off the scales because you read the book from the beginning to the end. Now you understand. You can't make it all the dots. So, so, so that's, so that's, you know a, that's a tough word for me, right? Because because um, I think I think that you know I think that the Most High actually draws us into it. In other words, mm -hmm. I don't think I woke up and said, you know, let me let me read the book. Right, yeah. I, I think that, you know, we that I was I think I was fished Going in, out right. of that water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think he did it. Yeah. And um you know if if if, if you ever had a, a good teacher or a good mentor or whatever, he, he knows what how to encourage you and how to lead you and guide you down the path. Yeah. Uh, so my little one was playing this song. Y'all heard that it made yeah. it beautiful. Oh, yeah, it so let me tell you how this happened, right? So she probably don't want me to tell it, but here's, here's how it went. He told her to go practice this, that, and the other. And so she was practicing something. And we were both listening to her and saying, that don't sound right, right? And I said in my mind, but I bet he's got a plan. And so the teacher was having to practice something that didn't sound so good to give her the exercise and uh, expand her understanding. And then he put that together with something else. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it sounded almost professional. Mm -hmm. I was upstairs into my office. I was like, that sounds beautiful. And I think that the Most High does the same thing for us. And, and in other words, we don't understand why we're going through this thing here. Mm -hmm. It seems unrelated to right. where he's taking us, right? And then when he brings it together, we're like, oh, and so once he's done that for you once yeah. or twice, then you start you should start trusting him more. Yeah. I was telling Nibia, you know, some junk is is, is 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 on the table. I'm looking for the most high and walking through a deal with it, whatever. And uh, this is not prideful, this is not arrogant, this is just True. my walk. And I said I said to her, I'm expecting the most high to make good out of this somehow. I'm, I'm expecting them to, and I don't mean like fairy tale good. Don't get me wrong, but I, but I'm expecting them. I'm expecting them to somehow get the esteem, the glory out of it, and for him to turn it around to somehow be a blessing. And this is the the the, the nature of understanding what curses are about, because he doesn't. He said you like punishment better. I'm okay with curses. This is what the books say, but but he doesn't. Loose curses on people as an attempt to just punish them. You know, they used to call it prison. Y'all know what they used to call prison? Penitentiary. Yeah. What, what, you know what penitentiary means? Penitentiary. <laughs> yeah. It was supposed to be a house of correction. It was supposed to help people to change their lives and come out. But now it's just prison. They, they ain't even lying about it no more. It's like all we're trying to yeah, do. They, they really meant something. They say they call it slavery. Okay, I guess you're right, brother. Don. I, 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 I can't debate with that. But but at least but at least they're not trying to fake the funk and say you know we're trying to yeah. recondition you. We're trying to what we're trying to do is get cheap labor out of you, and we're trying to keep you from being out there making more children. Mm -hmm. Both of them things are important to the powers that be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so all that to say, I don't mm -hmm. think the Most High has left off the desire for us to repent. Amen. And so punishment, punishment doesn't seem like it gives room for repentance. It's just like, 
I'm going to do this to you because you do that when you're mad at somebody, you know, they hit you once, you kick them twice. Yeah. That's punishment. Um, earlier, uh, Rob, you were saying how, you know, uh, the most high deal works on an individual basis a lot of times. Uh, I think about the prophets when they went into exile. You know, they went too. I mean, you know, they, they had to take the punishment too. Although they were committed to the most high, they had to take the punishment also, you know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. All right, so I guess we're about done. Does anybody else got questions, comments? Going once, going twice. Meeting the new people just came in. Any Bible questions you had on your mind? This is a big opportunity. You got you got brother Robert and brother. Yeah, everybody can answer. Good everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, if anybody's got something on their heart, uh, or want to sing a song, or want to give a testimony, it's to be a good time. Or I got something. What you got, brother? How you doing, brother? I'm going to do a song here where I'm on Scott. Scott, Scott. Scott. Um, by the way, it's in Michigan. Um, just have a question. What is repentance? And how far deep we got to go in repentance? What I mean is, yeah, I was in the world. You know, I was in the world, and I've done some, 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 some harsh things. Do I research and, and, and contact all those people that I've done wrong to? Do I try to find them and try to apologize to them to repent? Or I just repent to my father or or whoever I can get in touch with, you know? Like how do I how do I repent? Yeah. So so I'm gonna give you a it depends first and then I'm gonna answer the first question which is what is repentance, right? So the Hebrew word for repentance is to shoo or to shoo out, which means to turn, and the and the, and the picture, the, the the sort of vivid picture that 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 word is supposed to give is a man who's walking in this direction away from Elohim to turn and go back to Elohim. That's what the the bottom line picture of repentance is, right? And so when I've done wrong to someone, which is what you're referring to, the the question is always going to be between you and the Most High, um, because because you know. To this day, I mean, well, at least to a week or so ago, they may cross my mind something that I did or was involved in that was unsavory. Let's just put it like that, right? And so, you know, I find myself praying for uh, people who I don't have any real chance of finding. On the other hand, I remember it's been a few years ago. There was this uh, um, this this woman that I knew, and. Um, the most high gave me a dream. And in the dream, he showed me this, that, and the other, and I knew it was prophetic. And so I, I, I went to try to find her because I needed to tell her what that said. And I did find her, and I did tell her, and it was true. And so it's not the same every time, bro. You know, some, sometimes all, you, all you're left to do is to just, sometimes the people dead, or ain't no chance you'll ever find them. So the last, a couple of weeks ago, I was praying for the family of people who I may never see. I don't know if they're alive or dead. But I'm like, I'm like for, for, for what I did and what I was involved in, I ask that you bless their children, their children's children, if so, so it be it. And so you you got you to gotta understand that the, 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 the sorrow and the turning is 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 coming from as deep a place as the Most High will let you drill down into, and even your enemies, people who may have jacked you up, right? That you need to forgive. I'm sometimes praying for their children. You know, and it's not because I'm just trying to be a nice guy, but because I feel I feel like I understand how folk get caught up in sin. You know, I always struggle with that passage that Mashiach says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. I just say, what do you mean? You know, they've been trying to kill you for three, ten chapters here. You didn't know they knew what they were doing. And, 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 and so I didn't get the, if I can call it, a revelation of what he was saying. They, they didn't have a, a, a deep understanding of what was driving them and how they ended up in this place and what they were weighing out improperly, et cetera, et cetera. That's what he meant. And so I, I, I take the same heart when it comes to somebody who offends me. At least I try to. Because, you know, I still got a, a little bit of unsaved part, right? And, and he's working on that. So, hallelujah. Uh, yeah.
But good question. Good question. Mm -hmm.